In John Irving's literary fiction novel, Avenue of Mysteries, 2015, the central theme revolves around an elderly man's quest to reconnect with his past and fully embrace the present. The book garnered positive critical acclaim, with reviewers commending Irving's exploration of memory, time, and fate. As an internationally best-selling author, Irving's works have been translated into over 35 languages. His most renowned novel, The Cider House Rules, has also been adapted into a major motion picture. Prior to his writing career, Irving served as a wrestling coach. The protagonist of the story is Juan Diego, a writer who spent several decades working as a teacher. Adored by his former students, Juan is regarded as a kind and warm individual. Now retired from teaching, he plans to embark on a global journey, eager to explore the places he couldn't visit before. Seeking excitement and a change of scenery, Juan enlists the help of his former student, Clark French, in organizing his trip. Juan's first destination is somewhere near the Philippine Islands, where he encounters two peculiar women named Dorothy and Miriam. Despite not being romantically interested in him, they persistently captivate Juan's attention. Perplexed by their fascination with him, Juan secretly relishes the newfound attention. Eventually, Juan succumbs to temptation and engages in a sexual encounter with both women, feeling entranced by their spell. Consumed by his desire for them, he realizes the unhealthiness of the situation and decides to part ways with them. During his time with the women, Juan asks a young boy to take a photograph of him with Dorothy and Miriam on the beach. However, when the boy presents the photo to Juan, the women are mysteriously absent. This incident leaves Juan feeling alone once again. Taking a moment for introspection, he reflects on his life and its trajectory, starting from his humble beginnings in a shack in a poverty-stricken Mexican town. Living with his father, Rivera, mother, and sister, Lupe, Juan acknowledges Rivera's unwavering commitment to his children's well-being and the challenges they face together. Rivera, Juan's father, played a significant role in encouraging his son to fulfill his potential and embrace life to the fullest. Recognizing Juan's love for reading and writing, Rivera held hope that his son would one day become a teacher. Unfortunately, Juan's mother was largely absent from their lives, occupied with working as a cleaner at the local Catholic church during the day and engaging in prostitution at night. Despite her absence, she instilled in Juan and his sister Lupe a sense of independence. When they were just 14, Rivera arranged for them to have their own shack. The bond between Juan and Lupe grew strong, as he was the only person who understood her extraordinary ability to read minds. Tragedy struck one day when Juan's mother passed away in the church. Convinced that a statue of the Virgin Mary had spoken to her, she died from sheer fright. Juan witnessed the shocking event, and the memory remains vivid in his mind. Lupe, too, witnessed their mother's demise and has since been unable to discuss it. With their mother gone, the siblings embarked on a journey to join the circus, unsure of what lay ahead. Life at the circus quickly turned sour as the lion tamer, the circus's leader, subjected them to verbal abuse, belittling their worth. Juan desired to escape, but Lupe, feeling like she didn't belong anywhere else, discouraged him from leaving. I in a heartbreaking turn of events, Lupe, not wanting to hold Juan back from building a new life, vanished one night after leaping into the lion's cage, never to be seen again. Left feeling lost and alone, Juan found solace in the company of Eduardo, a young priest, who was secretly in love with Flor, a transvestite. Their relationship had to remain concealed due to Eduardo's role as a priest, and Juan became the sole confidant of their secret. Over the passing years, Juan relocated to Iowa, where he secured a teaching position and pursued creative writing. Eduardo stood by him, offering unwavering support and fervent prayers. Devastation struck Juan when both Eduardo and Flor succumbed to AIDS. Grief stricken and burdened by the weight of their secret, Juan felt betrayed by his inability to keep it any longer. Once again, he found himself without a true friend to confide in. Eventually, Juan returned from his journey, and Clark, curious about his experiences, eagerly inquired about the trip. Juan shares with Clark the profound enlightenment he experienced during his trip and expresses his eagerness to plan future adventures. However, fate takes a cruel turn as Juan falls ill and finds himself confined to a hospital bed. Deep inside, Juan knows that his time is limited, and he faces the harsh reality of his impending death. Refusing to accept the inevitable, Clark remains steadfastly by Juan's side, providing unwavering support throughout his final moments. As Juan's strength wanes, Clark, at last, comes to terms with the truth. With a heavy heart, he bids his last farewell, allowing Juan the peace to rest. As Juan lies there, grappling with his impending passing, 
memories of the church and his family flood his thoughts once again. Just as he feels himself slipping into slumber, two indistinct figures materialize Dorothy and Miriam, appearing as ethereal guides to accompany him into the realm beyond. Juan's journey comes to a serene conclusion as he peacefully passes away, embraced by the presence of these mysterious apparitions. I hope you enjoyed this video leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe thank you.